Hello everyone, the third general principle, visualization is a necessary skill and the basis of much of chess. So visualization helps guide calculation. As one calculates, one has to think in their head what the position would look like in the future. There is no game of chess played without visualization guys. You have to visualize the next sequence of moves. You have to think of how the board will look like in the future. So visualization is extremely important. All right, so for the associated principles. First, I want you to see the associated principles of the first general principle, which is about analysis, and the second general principle, which is about a board vision. Second, I want you to look at the explosion is a visualization error, which is um, uh, a principle we will look at much later. It's a very specific principle, but I thought I'd include it. Third, Sometimes closing your eyes during visualization can help. Now, this is also a bit of a controversial over the board principle, but I've included it as well because I've used it to good success. So um, this we will also take a look at much later. Okay, let's move on. So for the corollaries and sub principles, a helpful tip to remember when visualizing is to have a sense of the board as a whole. That is to maintain board vision during visualization. So we have to kind of combine the second general principle with the third. Don't just visualize a narrow sector of the board and not relate it to what is happening on the board as a whole. So of course this is easier said than done, but one must keep this fact in mind. And you can do a lot of things to train your visualization. Again, this is not a um, chess improvement series, but I thought I'd tell you, you can, for example, um, uh, do some calculation exercises you can try to see how you can combine uh, you can try to look at a move sequence five moves ahead and see how if you can still visualize the board as a whole so you can retain board vision during visualization that is very important so yeah, you can do all of these things well what's important is that you know that it's important to have uh, the ability to combine these two all right moving on to the famous game section all right guys so for the famous game section yeah just moving on here very quickly it's, it's by gary kasparov kasparov none other than the great legend from baku the beast from baku the monster from baku <laughs> yeah, and he was playing uh, picket or piquet Piquet was a really strong player. Not many people, I think, know about Piquet. Yeah, he's... Uh, for people who newer players in chess, who haven't studied the classics, um, Piquet is not so well known. And now I will show you how this game ended. Knight d3. You can't take the knight because of this guy. He gets... He becomes a queen. And after king b3 a2 with a nice fork trick occurring here white resigned seeing that takes is met by knight b4 check so kasparov already from over here he had to visualize all of this from this point he had to visualize knight d3 and a2 and knight b4 check now visualization of course occurs in all chess games <laughs> it's a really important principle um, but i thought i'd include it here it's so important i don't even have a scale for it but uh, anyway, um, I thought I'd include this game to show you the process of visualization because it really showcases a cute tactic at the end and it's by Gary Kasparov and uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So um, of course Gary had to visualize this from, uh, from uh, I don't know since when he visualized it. Maybe he visualized it since here and calculated this entire sequence. I don't know. But yeah. So pretty nice game. Let's move on to the other example section. All right, guys. So for the other example section, now it really pains me that I had to call this another example because the person on the white side is Carlos Torre Repetto. And uh, Torre is actually the guy who created the Torre attack. <laughs> so he's a really, really strong and you know, maybe famous player. But unfortunately, when I say Torre attack, I doubt anyone will be able to tell me it's uh, um, the person who created it. His name is Carlos Torre Repetto. So 
I thought I would uh, okay, I have to stop here by the way I thought I would just uh, put it under the other example section because if I put it in the famous game many people will ask me who's Carlos Torres so they wouldn't know about him anyway so bishop takes h4 check and already from here after the this exchange sacrifice maybe even earlier after h4 uh, Carlos uh, calculated this and visualized this position in his head he had to see that after rook f5 takes bishop takes h4 he had the brilliant and stunning bishop takes g6 of course you take the queen here which is the most logical move but now there's this check king h8 is the only move and now you take the rook this check is rather obvious as well but now you take here and after you take here i'm able to take here with the win of material and so in this position black resigned actually because if he moves his knight as well knight f7 check is coming so this is just a lost position and otherwise if he moves the queen rook takes f8 again you can't get out of this so you have to sacrifice the queen or rather sacrifice first and then the bishop takes yeah so carlos had to visualize all of this and it's one of his most brilliant games okay so with that i'll be ending this video guys i hope you can now relate uh, the first three general principles are very important to relate together analysis uh, board vision and visualization so yeah please uh, please try to relate these in your own games and with that take care